My final guest is Christine Bacon, co-artistic director of Ice and Fire Theatre Group. They've brought a remarkable, I hesitate to call it a play, event to the London stage. It's called Rendition Monologues, and it's based on the first-person accounts of those who were subject to, in the euphemism, extraordinary rendition. We might better call it kidnap and torture. Here's an excerpt. The U.S. soldiers who took me, six or seven of them, they were dressed in black. They were wearing black uniforms and black masks. They beat me severely from both sides. They cut off my clothes. They stripped me naked. They stripped me naked and took photos of me. Put fingers up my ears. I felt a stick or some other hard object being forced into my anus. They dressed me in a dark blue tracksuit. I was dressed in a diaper. They put diapers under my pants. I was shackled and blindfolded. Blindfolded. I was tied to a seat in an aeroplane for an eight to ten hours flight. I was thrown onto the floor of an aeroplane. During the flight, I received two injections. I was mostly unconscious for the duration of the flight. The plane landed at an airport. Somewhere. Somewhere. When they took me out of the plane, I could feel warm, dry air. And I knew immediately that wherever the plane had landed could not possibly be Europe. Uh, certainly not back in England. When the plane landed, I was injected with something which made me wake up. We drove for an hour. I was taken into a building. Nobody said a word. They didn't talk. The whole time, we communicated in sign language. No one talked to me the entire time. Powerful stuff. Christine, uh, welcome. Now, this uh, play is being supported by Reprieve, yep. the charity which campaigns for the human rights of prisoners uh, uh, around the world. Tell me how this came about and what you hope to achieve with it. Well, I met, uh, I met someone who volunteered at Reprieve um, over a drink, actually, and she said we'd, we'd had a history of working um, with asylum seekers to tell their stories um, in, their, in their own words. And she said, actually, I think, you know, I think something that you, know, you can do with Reprieve talking about what, what their, their clients have been through. So I went to see them, and I originally thought it was going to be about Guantanamo Bay, actually, the play. But after speaking to Reprieve for about 10 minutes, it became very apparent that Guantanamo actually wasn't the big story. The big story was this system of renditions and secret prisons that a lot of people didn't know anything about, and I was surprised at how ignorant I was myself, actually. So Reprieve gave me access to a huge mountain of material and, uh, you know, transcripts, court affidavits, that kind of stuff. And I put a script together. That's yeah, a brilliant script. Mm. Um, these are people who were sent to what are effectively legal black holes mm -hmm. uh, in countries that we don't necessarily even know. Mm -hmm. Some of the victims don't know which country That's they exactly were right. in. Yeah. Uh, but where torture was the, the lead motif. Yeah, so were it, you, were you shocked? Were you shocked by what you heard? I was very shocked. Um, during the research process, I had to keep sort of pinching myself to remind myself that today, this is happening now, it's not history, it's not 20 years ago. You know, and, and people tend, tend to think, okay, the furor uh, over 9-11 you know, has now died down and this is all kind of uh, history now, but it's not. It's still going on and the Obama administration has not outlawed it at all. Well, they have outlawed. They've said there'll be no more torture. Um, well, yeah, but the rendition process is, is more than torture. You know, it's, it's taking somebody to another country where they can be interrogated, they have no access to lawyers, they're not necessarily tortured each time. It's very, it, there's all sorts of, of ways that they do this, but, um, but yeah, no, he, it, they came out recently saying rendition within certain parameters is, is acceptable. However, 
extraordinary rendition in the way that we know it and we have, we've heard about it in the last seven years is nothing but a crime. Oh, a, a, a crime against humanity, mm. no doubt uh, about that. How does it translate to the stage, do you think? Well, I think it translates very well. I mean, the thing that struck me most profoundly was the, um, the harrowing accounts and how, how they all... There was, all, there was always a parallel in, in everyone's story um, about when they were picked up by, by the Americans, what actually happened to them, and that's what you just saw then, those, those kind of very clear accounts of I was shackled, I was blindfolded, I was tied in a seat in an aeroplane, I, I had diapers put on me, you know, those kind of things. Everybody says the same thing. And, um, and the, 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 de the dehumanisation, the humiliation, and the fact that, um, you know, the spookiest, one of the spookiest lines in the play is, is a line that, uh, 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 something that was, was said to Khaled uh, El Masri, a German citizen. Uh, an American said to him during the interview, do you know um, where you are? You're in a country where there are no laws, so we can bury you, we can keep you here for 20 years, and nobody on earth will ever know. So that kind of encapsulates what it actually is, what they are doing, and what they are getting away with, and what loads of other countries have. It's not just the Americans, of course, the British government have... Uh, well, it was uh, complicit, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, so it's now established that the government lied when they said mm -hmm. <coughs> that Britain had had no role in this. Yeah. It's uh, clear that rendition flights were touching down mm. in, uh, in Scotland. Yeah. How did the audience view it? They were shocked. You know, I, I'm very surprised, and throughout the whole process, I've been very surprised at the level of ignorance about this issue. People tend to know sketchy details. You know, oh, I know there are flights. I know there's something going on with... Syria or Egypt, but actually the scope of it, you know, the US government admit that s tens of thousands of men have been through this process. They admit to holding tens of thousands of men at this very moment. We don't know who they are. We don't know their names. They don't have any access to lawyers. Um, that kind of, those kind of uh, statistics really shock people because they think it's a handful of people. And the accounts themselves, the stories of the men are just unbelievable. I mean, I'm sure a lot of your viewers will know about Binyam Muhammad's story, um, which was recently, um, you know, Binyam was returned to the UK. Um, and his, his account of torture and, and abuse is just, it's medieval, you know. <laughs> and the British government had a lot to do with what happened to him, yeah. you know. Well, indeed. Now, mm. the show opened where? In, in Southwark? Actually, it opened last year. We, um, we, the way it works is that we <coughs> respond to requests from organisations. We do it for free. Um, the actors volunteer. They're all professional actors. It's called Actors for Human Rights. And we go wherever we're asked to go. Um, so if anyone thinks there's an audience for something like this, we'll go anywhere. So How do they contact you to do they that? They just go onto our website, iceandfire.co.uk. Iceandfire.co.uk. And we're now called you're, you're going to the, uh, to the Edinburgh Festival. Tell That's us right. about that. Um, we're doing a week's run of it at the Edinburgh Festival from the 17th to the 23rd, and that's in the program. 17th, 23rd of, of August. August. Sorry, yeah. Not everyone watching knows when the Edinburgh Festival. Yeah, of course, of course. Sorry. Um, 17th to the 23rd of, of August. August yeah. Which, which uh, venue? It's called the St John's Church on Princess Street, um, but it's all on the website, and uh, you can go and check that out. Um, but we, we're doing we're doing various things throughout the year as well. Actually, when I leave today, I'm going off to Bristol. To, we do, we're presenting Binyam's story to some people in Bristol. So um, we just we go wherever I'm asking. interested in this actors for human mm. rights. So they they are they're professional actors, yeah. but they're not necessarily being paid uh, for they're this. They're not being this paid. Is, no. This is their uh, vocation. They volunteer. Yeah, it's it's a network of over 350 professional actors now who donate their time and their skills to draw public attention to human rights concerns. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, as I said, historically. Any big names amongst them? Few, you a know, few, yeah. It'd be nice to see some of the big owners, some of the big names. Yeah, no, of that. there are, there are a few, and the more people hear about it, the more they're um, mm. they're willing to get involved. And we only ask for a day of their time, so, um, and it's a reading. What we present is a rehearsed reading, so it's not time intensive. Yes, but yeah, you know, yeah. we're asking actors to use their skills to do what they well, do. Well, Christine, uh, I take my hat off to you. Well done, uh, and good luck. Iceandfire.co.uk. Iceandfire.co.uk. Yep. Now stay with me because. I tell you, it's real fighting talk next. Oh, just the way you move. It's a real deal. 